मैंने उसका नाम ओम क्यों रखा इसकी एक कहानी है माना जाता है कि यदि मिथुनांश के शनि को उसका लग्नेश देखे तो जातक केवल सत्रह की आयु में मृत्यु को प्राप्त होता है फिर मैंने विचारा कि ओम नाम का टाइप अब तक यमदूतों की सूची में शामिल नहीं है यदि मैं उसे ओम पुकारूं तो वो हमेशा मृत्यु की दृष्टि से लापता रहेगा you've said in the past that has really intrigued me is that you once said um, that cinema is a process that can only be done alongside youth it's a young man's thing and not an old man's thing i've never really understood why you said that see i also was intrigued because i read a bunwell's interview that cinema is an age and it passes you know hmm. he says that what i think you know like a way it when you are young between say about 20 or 30 or 35 or something you know you know and uh, uh, there is some kind of a instinct that uh, you want to construct a image and there is a certain kind of a sacredness about that mm. the newness of it or freshness of it it's almost like biological you know you know i always tell people that bioscope has something to a bit of a biology in it you know you know it's almost like uh, a you know like hormonal system you know the cinema you know and uh, otherwise also they say you know like okay in your heart there is a pituitary gland or something a gland here where in mahavir swami or buddha or jesus christ they show and slowly slowly it diminishes or just you know like vanishes that kind of a thing and that's what connects you with the uh, space around you or life around you you know it's like you know tuning with through your eyes but somewhere you're tuning it with some kind of a which um, in the temple architecture it's called the hriday akash the one empty space inside which they say in the temple architecture that sanctum sanctorium which is an empty space and that pulsates and that's what creates the walls of the cinema and the, the wall is actually the screen projecting the life around you know and slowly slowly it diminishes which i experienced you know you know that now why if i do films it'll be very concocted and it'll be uh, manipulative as a and it will be like making a living or making a money you know you know but it's not same what when it was between 20 and 35 you know, you know. Mm. i can sense it you know in an earlier conversation you mentioned to me that um om dar badar was like a thing that was just refusing to let you go and it was almost becoming a painful relationship with om dar badar um i I've always wanted to understand how given that it's been there for so long with you how has your relationship with what was once probably an healthy part of you changed how has your relationship with the film changed and does that also actually inflect your own relationship with your past see when i made uh, om dar badar it wasn't uh, to make a film you know it was like a kind of a ritual you know you know and uh, ritual uh, for what uh, and you know i mean it was a means for what and i wouldn't know and uh, i wasn't uh, you know like uh, uh, like really wanting wanting i mean i wasn't really making a film but going through a ritualistic process of this film making you know i mean almost like a gathering my samagri you know ki there is a frog and there is a this preet kund there is this man there is this bicycle and putting them together for uh, like an alchemist and but what i wanted to change i didn't know you know 
I knew a bit what I was aspiring for, you know, you know but uh, it's almost like a spelling mistake between will it be cans or it will be in the cans, you know, you know. So it stayed in the cans, didn't go to the cans, you know, you know. But uh, uh, there were a lot of accidents in that film and uh, uh, it, uh, it backfired on me because, uh, you know, like, you know, something like that. But today I'm very surprised. I, I look back, but I don't look back because I'm too uh, distant from that past, you know. I, uh, and I don't believe in memories anymore, you know. You know. And so, but I see people like it. And uh, uh, because, like I said, you know, the cinema is an age and it passes. So that age, between the 20 and 30. Do you still watch it? Do you watch no, it? I don't watch it. But at age between 20 and 30, they feel, uh, they get excited about it, you know, you know. So, see, what happened that, you know, like it is, it was about adolescence and I was reading a lot of things and when you become 20 or 22 or 25, you just cross that age, you know, you know. So somewhere uh, you connect with that age, you know. I mean, uh, you just cross the threshold of the adolescence, you know, you know. So it uh, reinforces uh, what you have uh, crossed over, you know, you know. Like this film won't work with a guy who's about 40 or 50 or something, you know, you know, because he is far away from that, you know, that image. So I'm very surprised and I feel people are very kind to me. And they like it, you know, because that time when it came into the market, uh, people didn't think it was a film or it was anything, you know. What for you was then, when you were in your 20s, the most painful part of filmmaking? And what for you do you think will be the most painful thing within cinema today? For me, that age, you know, like, uh, was that, you know, like, you believe in certain magical powers, you know, you know, in that age, you know, and, uh, and you, uh, uh, the escape is in delusions, you know, you know, and you delude, you, you know, the, it's an escape in delusions, you know, you know, and uh, you have a thought, and suddenly that thought materializes all around, you know, it's a delusion, you know, like, suppose you have, uh, a theme about frocks, you see frocks everywhere, you know, even in the matchboxes or in any shape or any form, you know, you know, and and you think, yeah, you know, like what I'm thinking is true because it's all around, you know, and and uh, it's your delusion actually, you know, you know. So that magical power has some kind of a pathos in it, you know, because uh, you know, like, uh, you really can't control anything, you know, but you ha have this uh, self-delusionary uh, imagination which can transform the surroundings around, you know, you know. And there's a pathos because it's not real, you know, you know, it's not true. You, uh, you know, like I say that you can't uh, uh, cast a spell on somebody, you know. You can only cast a spell on yourself, you know, you know. So what you be, what ultimately happens that you become a guinea pig for your own experiments, you know, you know, and that's quite painful. Mm. And do you think that has changed over time? I wouldn't know about the others, but uh, I I mean personally, like all adolescents, you know, are shamans, you know, you know, because they have to go through the ions or eons, whatever it's called, yugas, and they go through the shamanistic period. In each age, you have the yugas, you know, you know. So you go through the shamanistic uh, phase, you know, and by choice. And uh, otherwise, also is there, you know. So I enjoyed that. But I don't know if, uh, you know, that exists after age or is industry uh, shamanist, you know, I wouldn't know. Or are they just tricksters, you know, you know? So then in that case, what for you becomes the starting point of a film? Like, I've heard that for some people, it would be one solitary image. 
for others it would be just one larger ethereal idea for others it would be one situ- like is is there do you, is there a process that you've always liked to follow is there a originary point there is the ori- you know i mean the beginning point would be something uh, deeply felt you know and it's an emotion you know it's a feeling something deeply uh, which you can't describe mm. uh, and i i'm i'm not way uh, good at languages you know like i can't write that f- feel or that you know so that's there you know and then it uh, tries to express itself into images or looks for the images that uh, can ex- express it you know you know and uh, once you have these images that uh, stand so that pain or that hurt or that uh, feeling uh, they come together and they uh, they start uh, w- w- you know chemically react with each other and at one point they become automatic you know you know but uh, i can only uh, 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 see that okay i mean does it still have that kind of a original uh, connection with the felt pain or something you know you know so i let it go according to that you know i mean it might disintegrate and uh, i might lose the track of the originally felt you know pain or the feeling you know you know but at the moment you know like my body is not that strong that i can really uh, digest that kind of a pain you know so i give it away you know i mean i give it up to face it you know you know or uh, exercise that ghost you know so i become slightly filmy and parody and caricature and yeah you know but if you are strong maybe then you can you know digest and express it you know you know what is deeply felt unhone mendak banne se inkar kar diya tha unhone nitrogen ke khilaf hathiyar utha liye the aur udhar house of rana tigrina mein my next question is that um what is your response to the contemporary moment of digital explosion like is yours an optimistic response and the second part of it and i'd just try like to tie it with the earlier discussion on nomdar badal is that um you once were talking to me about how the proliferation of digital technology is central to the cultural afterlife of omdar badal the film you, you what you said to me was that omdar badal literally had a a rebirth of sorts because of this because of digital circuits so i'll uh, answer to the second question first because the first one is quite complicated you know you know there's a thing is you know like uh, uh, i had made uh, a vhs copy of uh, omdar bada to submit to the censor you know you know on a steam back because steam they had a, they had uh, attached a vhs machine to the steam back where you could copy you know and submit to the censor because uh, uh, you know even they don't have that kind of a storing place that they'll keep the cans you know you know because one thing is uh, always which i think and which i realize that the all these things writing video films are a way to preserve the memories you know you know and keep a record of things you know keep a library or keep a record of things so once in one medium or uh, the space becomes lesser it's not uh, they are not able to keep it together or store it they shift to a different medium you know you know where they can store more information more memories into a lesser space you know you know it's an overflow yeah you know so is is if you see you know like suppose all the time you have scripts you know you have mahabharat drama and you know then you have oral tradition then you store them in books you have many variation then uh, films come they make the films on them mm. then the b- b- same over the mu- mu- uh, music you have records coming then you turn them into tapes mm. then you turn into a disc then you turn into something else then similarly uh, b- b- you say paper you know you but make them the photocopies then you digitalize them you know because the it's so much accumulative you know so how do you store them you know you know so this is a one mechanical need also you know then artistic expression will go you know it's a different thing you know you know so uh, so the vhs thing you know okay 
सो आई सबमिट द एंड दे इज अ सेंसर प्रॉब्लम यू नो यू नो यू नो एंड दे आर नॉट हां बिकॉज़ दे डिडंट गिव मी द सर्टिफिकेट दे वर हैंग फॉर अबाउट वन ईयर दे यू नो व्हाट व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम दैट दे सेड दे आर हिडन मीनिंग्स इन दैट एंड यू नो सो दे कॉल्ड अ मौलवी यू नो एंड सेड दिस बॉय हु इज वेयरिंग द लॉकेट इज इट अ कुरान शरीफ यू नो so they he saw it and i said it's not a quran sharif it's a small bible you know which can be uh, compressed in one small book because the quran they have quran sharif lockets that keep in the tabis you know you know similarly you have bibles also and similarly you have dic- english dictionaries also you know you know so i said it's not a bible or a quran sharif it's actually a english dictionary you know which is reading mm-hmm. and he is reading a poem you know from there you know, you know. so they say okay but still they were not convinced they said there is a song called turty tral you know is it satri akal you know you know so various things so finally they gave me a certificate saying that the we giving you because you know like maybe people you know will they'll get some wrong messages from this film you know so they didn't give it anyway you know and it wasn't selected in panorama or anywhere or anywhere you know mm. like. so that vhs i had a copy of that vhs you know you know and uh, there was uh, ashish uh, rajadaksha mm. so he was going to kasoli and kasoli uh, all this uh, there was this gathering of the artists you know you know bupen kakkar vivan sundaram manjeet baba and ye you know uh, all great artists you know you know so they took that vhs there and they used to see day and night you know you know that vhs you know i watch it i watch it you know it become like something you know you know there and uh, then that vhs single copy they were copying you know so it was circulating in that artistic uh, circle you know you know then their kids saw these vhs so they started you know circulating and by the time you know i mean uh, copies and copies and there were nothing left in that copy you know only the soundtrack not even a picture you know yeah uh, but just to have that copy people so think that there were Uh, that there were copies of Omdar Badar go- doing the rounds which were in VHS. Ah, uh, just they were just uh, picture had uh, disappeared, you know. You know. Yeah. But it became a ritual object, you know, by itself. That you know, and at the same time, the reputation was like that. That we we are the only people who know this, you know. You know. Yeah. You know. It was a uh, it, you know. for the longest time. It was a cult film, right? Yeah. I think. So uh, when is it that it becomes of just more than a FTR is very selected uh, artist circle cult into a slightly larger phenomenon which it is currently see then what happened that uh, it was a, there was a girl called uh, shai herdia so she was running this experiment uh, festival you know so they said how do you slot this film you know because the commercial guys didn't think it was commercial enough and artistic thing uh, people think thought that it was not art enough you know you know so they was they tried to slot it into uh, uh, experimental film you know you know kind enough and they saw and uh, there were people you know because they had heard about this film and it had a very kind of a different kind of a reputation and some people get attracted to a certain kind of a reputation or a fame you know you know it's a very d- exclusive positioning right. of yourself you know you know you know so uh, almost like it's like i you know i fought for uski roti but i haven't seen it you know you know you know and uh, so there she made a dvd copy of it you know shai herdia and then the dvd copy started moving you know you know in the market you know i mean have you seen uh, you know so it become somebody made a film also that uh, the dvd copy of undarba is like a you know like a you know like a what is called password you know you know mm. and then somebody put it in the torrent you know and the people start seeing in the torrent you know you know and twenties it just i mean uh, from after 2001 so did this take you by surprise that suddenly a few uh, of people well, i didn't do it, it you know some no, people but, did but did it take you by surprise i mean before this no i knew it club no i knew it i was sharp enough when i made this film to know it you know i knew it won't go waste and uh, it's it 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 will uh, eat into space you know i mean it's going to eat into some space you know you know and uh, i mean i like i said you know like we thought we were shamans you know you know so there was some kind of a, but it's a matter of uh, weight you know you know i mean it is a matter of weight you know you know because we were also were dealing with immortality and time and life you know you know so when you are putting all the, your you know pressure on your 
uh, willing and wishing, you know, it works. Today, I maybe won't be able to do that. I do still. But, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm, uh, I might do it again. I mean, I tried to do it in Falke, but that was being too, too ambitious, you know. It would have, you know, like it would have wiped out a lot of space and cleaned a lot of space, you know, for me. I mean, I would have claimed so much space that it would have been really obscene, you know. You know, you know. Today, I'm slightly humble. See, like, uh, Omdar Bada, uh, uh, one, one theme in Omdar Bada is about being hybrid, you know, you know. And uh, the 87 and around that time is exactly a shift from films to video, you know, you know. It is, my, I had called my company, uh, it was called uh, Graffiti Film and Video, you know, where people thought video is a bad stuff, you know, you know. I mean, but I was very attracted to video because I used to think uh, cinema is religious, video is uh, secular, you know, like that. Uh, uh, films you can't erase, video you can erase, you know, you can uh, run it back and for, you know, you know. And uh, I, because since I come from ISRO, so I wasn't a very anti-video kind of a thing because I started my career with the Indian Space Research Organization and in video, you know, you know. And I had a project called uh, Video Puran where I'll uh, stay in Ajmer for 10 years and shoot people there, you know, for 10 years and uh, uh, edit it again, again, so it will be opening and closing, opening and closing, and the people will grow, die, the children born, like an, if you take Ozo's film from 1980, mm. 28 to, say, 60, you put it together, it is nothing but a documentation of aging of a family, you know. Mm. He is taking the same actors, mm. that kind of a, which is was only possible in video, you know, you know, not in a film, you know. So that kind of a aspiration, were already there, you know, like we could sense it, like an entrepreneur, you know, that the video is coming and uh, your philosophy is different of looking at things, you know, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, with a, you know, a small segment of time is not sacred, you know, you know, I mean, you can spread time, you can stretch time, you can compress time, you know, you could play with time now, you know, you know. so that kind of a thing was there and that's where we, we could, uh, you know, like create more life, you know, in within us, like I, we still believe that the films in two hours time, it might give you 100 years, you know, it might give you 1000 years, you know, right. and the experiential time, you know, you know. Mm. So those thoughts were there, you know. So it, the thought really worked because, you know, like uh, the cameras broke down and suddenly, you know, in, in the, we shooting in a film, but the effects were like video, you know, you know. Mm. You know, when the shutter broke down and when we saw the footage, they were like video effects, you know, you know, you know. So it was a transition time which revealed to me, you know, it got captured in the camera, you know. And but there was a, you know, a, bit, a kind of a battle between the analog or the machine and the nature because nature doesn't give a damn, you know, you know. I mean, it's beyond video or beyond digital and beyond analog and beyond machine and beyond matter, you know, you know, it's a, it's a spirit, you know. So spirit uh, is beyond uh, matter, you know, you know, I mean, of course it's, you know, I mean, it's a, it, you know, whatever it is, spirit is an alchemic process and it is uh, uh, distilled by the metals, you know, you know, you know. But uh, I saw that battle happening in front of my eyes, you know, you know, I mean, that was the ritual, you know, to see that, not the final film, but Om Darbada raised on the screen, you know, you know. Bablu Babylon Bablu Telephone Singh. See, what happened that uh, after Om Darbada, uh, uh, after Om Darbada, I went to a friend of mine, a psychoanalyst, said, uh, uh, what should I do, you know? So he said, why don't you make a film about learning itself, you know, you know, or education itself, learning itself, or imagination itself. So, um, in fact, I didn't want to make a film because I had made Om Darbadar and I was too shocked by that film. And I said, oh, what do I make? But I, at the same time, I have to say something that was great, you know. So I decided to make a film on Falke, you know, Dada Sahib Falke. So I had this 15-page biography of uh, him 
and I said, I'm going to do, and people came that will give you money for that, you know. So there was one guy who said, okay, let's do a serial on Falke, you know. So with 15 pages, so in 15 pages, uh, they said, you know, like his father was a Sanskrit scholar, he was an astronomer, then Falke was born in Trimbakeshwar, then he went to JJ school to study tracing, drawing, photography, then he went to Baroda, MS University, learned photography and printing, then he went to become a magician, then he became a backdrop painter, then he joined archaeology as a draftsman, then uh, he again went back to printing, then he came across the life of Jesus, then he became a filmmaker, then the sound came and he lost everything, then he started extracting silver from the film, then he became uh, you know, a lot of things. Then finally he made Ganga Uttar and, you know, you know. And so I started researching, you know, and, and it was an endless research because I'll say, okay, I have to construct his father's character, you know, you know. So I have to, he was a storyteller, a katha vachak, you know. So I had to study 108 stories, you know, which Falke made ultimately, you know, all the stories, you know, you know. Then he's, he's an astronomer, so I have to read astronomy. So I read Tilak's writings about, on astronomy, you know, Orion and Yevo, you know. Then his one uncle was a homeopath in railways, so I studied homeopathy, you know. Then uh, he went to JJ School of Art, so I started studying, you know, the beginning of the industrial art schools in India, you know. Then I started the teaching methods of drawings and Yevo, you know. Then his father became a translator of the scriptures to English, you know, you know. So I started reading the Great India Project where they had uh, transcribed all the Indian literature and they had this uh, documenting the photographs of people and uh, assigning their caste, nose, ear, I don't know, phrenology or something, yeah. you know, you know. Then he became a small time photographer, so early photography in India, so never ending. So people say, when are you ready? You know, I said, no, now I have to study this, you know. So I found a great escape in this, you know, you know, where to I... To point where it's impossible to limit it to one film, right? Yeah, but uh, the idea is that, uh, it's, that's what I'm saying is tough, you know. I mean, like a, my brain, you know, there's so much and it uh, makes this chip, you know, which is confined to within a skull. I have to reach at that point, you know, where I can put in all this information into two hours, you know, you know. I mean, it will have to invent it some different kind of a form, you know. It won't, maybe it won't look like life of Falke, you know. But I have to arrive at that two hour, you know, vision, which uh, contains all the learning and the information and my experiences of the journey of searching, you know, of Falke and learning, you know, you know. And if the, you know, if the brain can be put into a skull, you know, why can't this be done, you know, means if the consciousness can be stored in a brain, why can't be this consciousness stored in a two-hour film, you know, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll do it. You, you compress all of it into Yes, the yes, yes, I'll do it. Right. And it'll, it'll find a form, it'll invent a form, you know. If nature had done it, why can't I do it, you know, you know. Uh, you also said that you are working on a book on it. Maybe that's a better The book is uh, done, you know. I mean, the book also grows, you know. I mean, like, um, I had this book, uh, Falke, which was a scrapbook. That's the beginning, you know. Like, what I did that, uh, we made a, uh, his timeline from 1870 to nine, uh, uh, 1944. So, you have a timeline, events of your life and what's happening around, you know. Internet wasn't at that time, so this was the way. Then I used to find the images, corresponding images from everywhere, you know, like some magazine, some book, something, Xerox it, cut paste. Mm. So it's kind of a script book, you know, and it keeps growing, you know. Now uh, people have bought this book for three around 3,000 a copy, you know. Now they are doing, working on this, you know. So they are now rewriting it, I mean not rewriting, adding on it and cut paste on the book itself, you know, because it becomes like a kind of a thinking tool, you know, a method to think. And now their their own personal <laughs> books are growing, you know. So the children of that book, you know, because I don't believe in the printed book, you know, you know. I, I think it should keep growing, keep growing, you know, you know. 
into other Xerox books, you know. A similar like video, you know, you know, like the print, printing will be like making a film. Mm. But I like this video, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the book is producing books, you know, you know. Because no book will be same, you know, you know. They, each book is going to be different, you know. Yeah. You know. Because, and the reader is rewriting it, you know. You know. So that's quite a thing. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And welcome. Hi and welcome to Cinema and Me. Today I'm in conversation with Kamal Sarup. Kamal, I want to start the conversation with a question that we usually ask almost everybody we speak to. Uh, what is your, what is the earliest memory of cinema that you have? Uh, the earliest will be when I'm around two, uh, in 1954, in Srinagar. Uh, watching a movie. I think the movie is uh, Janak Janak Payal Baje by Chantaram and a colored movie. And the image that I remember, that's the first image I remember, is that uh, there's a woman lying on the ground and she's covered by the leaves. And uh, one guy comes and uh, he clears the leaves from her face and you see the face. And uh, the leaves are uh, chinar, you know, the, the Kashmir, you have the chinar trees. Then later I saw they were not chinar. I recently saw Janak Janak Payal Vajay. But I think in my memory I uh, uh, saw chinar because in Kashmir uh, I saw chinar, you know. So in a way, you know, like when you read and uh, when you read, so you recall your memory and read, you know, you know. So. So I, but in pictures also, when you're actually reading an image, maybe you're not just seeing that image, you know, you know, you are actually replacing or displacing, displacing a memory image, you know, and superimposing onto that. You know. But more than an image of a film, what I remember is in Srinagar again, there's an image about I don't know what magazine it is. It's again a color magazine, which has a painting or a photograph. But it's a, a person piercing his eyes with two knitting needles. And his eyes are dark. I mean, there are no eyes, but it's a two needles entering into the dark holes. And you see the wools which uh, that person, that person is not seen, but the face and the knitting needles. That's what I remember. Right. I think um, all of us have a certain mode of engagement through images. For example, I would read a lot of Tintin when I was young, you know. And it's almost like I made sense of the world around me through the color palette and through the plots, through the characters of Tintin. And it's almost like central to how I fundamentally understood images, I think, and this is my looking back at that point of time, is through this lens of what I would then read profusely. Did you have something which you think coloured your, coloured the way you um, understood images as a whole? Uh, like I said, no, this uh, Janak Janak Payal Baje was, uh, when I saw it later, so they were almost like the photographs painted, you know, with a watercolor kind of a thing, you know. But when I remember the image, they are chinal leaves, you know, which is a brownish kind of a leaf, you know, that I put on that, you know. But because, you know, I don't belong to the print culture, you know. I mean, when I'm talking about the young age, you know, you know. But say I have another memory, which will be around two, when I'm two, this picture of that, it's a forest like Devdars, you know, Devdar trees. I mean, it's a dense forest and uh, camouflage on the branches, you know, covered by the leaves. Are these monkeys sitting, you know, you know. And when, when you see closely at this picture, you see the monkeys, you know, you know. Like, and it's almost like you discovered the monkeys be hidden behind the trees, you know. And it's almost like a movement, you know, like, the picture is static, you know, I mean the print picture. But suddenly you see the monkeys hidden behind the leaves. And uh, this is your own discovery. Means It means something has moved in that, in that picture, you know. 
Now again, uh, I'll be uh, superimposing color on that, you know, my own colors, you know, because I don't think uh, b uh, they would have that kind of a color printing what the impression is left in my mind, you know, you know, I, uh, you know, the glossy advertising kind of a picture, you know, you know, uh, offset printing or something, you know, you know. But uh, I mean, it's impossible that they would have that kind of a printing at that time. You know, I'm talking about 1954. You know, uh, one film that you remember for its images? Malay's all films and uh, Days of Matthews. One film that you remember for its sound? Conversation, and thing, and uh, Scream, Polish film. Um, one film that you remember for its music? Last order. Is it a film that has um, reminded you of Om Darbada? Brazil. Yeah? Oh. Um, what is your favorite Om Darbada story? Uh, frog in the... Uh, what is that? Frog in the... Well, the diamonds in the frog. In